Well, hey, I wanted to do a follow-up video to my Mac Studio M4 Max review that I shared with you guys recently where I compared it to my M2 Ultra. If you watched that video, you saw my pain of realizing I can't even sell the M2 Ultra. Well, good news, I sold it. And so what that means is I was able to, <laughs> instead of paying off the M4 Max, I bought the M3 Ultra. Well, really what I wanted to know is, did I make a mistake? Did I do the wrong thing by getting the M4 Max and leaving the Ultra chips behind? Because in my opinion, the Ultra chip is really, was designed for me because on my M2 Ultra, I really used the heck out of that for video production. I needed all those cores. I need it because sometimes I do for clients, I may have a lot of noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve, for example, that usually cripples any Mac is when you put noise reduction on video timelines on your, on your A roll, on your B roll, and you start stacking that stuff. You can watch machines just slow down to a crawl. That's just with regular 422S log raw video that I shoot with on my Sony cameras. And so I was really curious to see what the benefits would be of having the M3 Ultra machine to compare it since I had had the M2 Ultra for so long. And I've been using this M4 Max for quite a while and it's been a beast, but there are some things that you guys need to know about the M4 Max Mac Studio. Now that I've got both Mac Studios, it's been great to compare these side by side with video timelines, with photography, with a lot of the things that I normally do. I thought I'd make this quick video to talk about that because there are some things you guys need to know. So first thing I noticed comparing these two is the, okay, this is the M3 Ultra, I'm getting confused. The M3 Ultra is a lot heavier. And that's because the M3 Ultra actually has a copper heat sink for the processor. And I mentioned that because you will not only notice the difference in weight, the M4 Max is lighter, but you're gonna notice a difference in heat also. And I notice when I'm working with these two machines and they're, the CPU and GPU are pegged to 100%, this one, the M4 Max, gets a lot hotter and you can actually hear the fans rev up. So if you're an audio production person where you want a machine that's completely dead silent all the time, even when you're maxing out the CPU, depending on your environment, you, you just need to know that because this one gets hot, first of all. It gets decently loud, I can hear it for sure. And when I put my hand behind it, I could definitely feel the heat coming off of it. Okay, now we're at 107 degrees Celsius. So that is one thing to keep in mind with the M4 Max Mac Studio is when you're doing highly intensive. So this is one of the most intensive processes is when you do raw files export from Lightroom. I mean, this thing is at 107 degrees Celsius. I don't, I don't hear the fans at all though, um, but it is getting pretty hot. So man, that is one thing to think about with the M4 Max. Just a quick shout out to clean my Mac. I have it installed on this Mac Studio and I noticed I was running out of space. So if you go up here to the menu bar, you literally just go to free up space because you can see on this one terabyte drive I've got just that much left and it did a full scan and found 6.4 gigs of junk and what's cool is is you can review that and it explains what those items are so in this instance user cache files 4.8 gigs of user cache files that's a lot and you can see it breaks it down for you so you can see and it explains what those cache files actually are and the cost of subscribing to clean my mac is really less than the cup of coffee you buy and that's only per month for your one mac so highly recommend checking out clean my mac the link is in the description of this video i think it's going to be a great value to you if you decide to go this route i just have to add this thing is awesome it's doing these other things in the background it flushed my dns cache and it's purging it's freeing up purgeable space as well, and it's gonna run updates. So that it's doing everything for me in the background. So I love how easy it is to use Clean My Mac. So that is something to keep in mind with the M4 Max Mac Studio is the audio, 
quality or the audio of the fans and the heat. The heat on this, I saw it get up to, what was it, 110 degrees Celsius or something. That's pretty dang hot for any processor. The only processor I've ever seen get that hot is an old AMD Radeon graphics card, the 6900 XT. If any of you are familiar with GPUs, the reference version from AMD, that thing got really dang hot. And my PC behind me, this has a 9800X3D, an AMD processor in it. And those processors are known to get really hot too. When this is under load, loading shaders in a game, I've seen it hit 95 degrees. But 110 degrees is really hot and makes me really uncomfortable about the M4 Max. And that's why I mention that because if you're a photographer and you export a lot of photography like I do, I'll be doing a batch export of a thousand raw photos that are A7R5 60 megapixel files. And when I was doing that on this machine, the thing got really hot and you could hear those fans revving up. I can't believe it. I can actually hear the fans on the M4 Max Max Studio. And it's cooling it down to 101 from, I think it got up to 108 or something like that. And it, it's, uh, it's getting hot. I can feel it on the aluminum chassis out here. So, wow, this thing gets hot. Whereas this stayed dead quiet. And it also stayed very cool. It never got that hot compared to this. And so that's thanks to that copper heat sink. And I really just wanted to mention that because when you're comparing these machines and specking them out, you really need to know. By the way, this is the M3 Ultra, the base model of the M3 Ultra. So it's 96 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. By the way, Micro Center had these on sale for $35.99. Once you start building this one out, you can quickly catch up to that price point. This one is a build to order, so it's it's upgraded. It has 64 gigs of RAM and it has two terabytes of storage. So that's a really interesting comparison comparing these two machines. This one has more RAM but less storage. This one has less RAM and more storage. So I was trying to figure out within the price range of where I was. I'm still in the return window so I can return the M4 Max if I want or resell it. I just wanted to mention these things because I'm definitely probably going to keep the M3 Ultra for my use case because if you're a video editor like me, I actually really desire those GPU cores. For me, that is super important to have the higher GPU cores in there for my video timelines. I just wanna know that I have no limits. When I can apply noise reduction and do all the things I know I'm gonna do for video, I know I'm not gonna be held back with this machine. Also, it's gonna stay quiet and cool. Those are bonus points too. Okay, we're about halfway through on the M3 Ultra export of a thousand raw files. This maxes out everything and gives us the most accurate taxing task that we can do. So we're exporting a thousand files, A7R5, and this thing is only 59 degrees right now. And I don't hear the fans at all. The fans are completely silent. I hear nothing. And I only feel a little bit of heat coming out the back and we're humming along really nicely. So this thing is a beast for exporting and chewing through 60 megapixel raw files, a thousand of them. It is just destroying these files. We're now up to 61 degrees, which is well under what we were on the M4 Max. The one thing about the M4 Max that I really love, the single core performance is phenomenal. And single core performance applies to most of the things you do when you're web browsing, when, when you're editing in Lightroom, like for not, not for exporting, but just normal editing, this thing is a beast. Um, for exporting just a small amount of photos, this thing is a beast. And so for a lot of you out there, this one's gonna be the way to go. If you're not doing huge exports or you're not doing real heavy 4K or 8K video timelines, then you're probably gonna wanna lean to this. And even for that, like if you wanna do all the things that I'll do on this, you're gonna be able to do them on this for sure. 
you just have to know that it does get super hot <laughs> and those fans rev up. And so that's something to just keep in mind. Also for me, I'm just super picky. Like knowing that this was built a little better and it has a copper heat sink in it, that's very reassuring for me. For someone that wants to invest in a machine, knowing that you're gonna keep it and use it for the next three years plus, then that's really good to know with this machine. I think that's what it is about the Ultra machines. The M2 Ultra was with us for a long, long time in technology years. And that means the M3 Ultra could be with us for a while. I don't know what Apple's got up their sleeves, but it makes me know for a fact that they're probably not going to make an M4 Ultra because based on that, based on the fact that this gets that hot, if you put two M4 Max chips and glue them together, that's gonna get really, really hot and they're gonna have to have some really good cooling to make this work. And so I don't know, I don't even know if a copper heatsink will keep that as cool as it needs to be. It's gonna have to be like liquid cooled or something. And that's really why I think Apple may have stopped looking into making an M4 Ultra because of how hot the, the chip gets just because of the sheer performance that it was pushing out in that new architecture. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the reason why I'm gonna probably return the M4 Max and just keep going with, I'm gonna keep going on the Ultra bandwagon and continue from the M2 Ultra to this M3 Ultra. So let me know what you guys think. Did I, am I losing my mind? Should I just return this and just keep the M4 Max? You guys tell me what you think, and if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for stopping by today. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up if you like today's content, and ring that bell to get notified when I drop new content, and I'll see all you guys on my next video.